guys, it's Laurie of Laurie's Sewing. And today, I have had several things happening. Like, for example, the neighbor across the street is using some type of a device that sounds like a dental drill that you would use to carve a giant granite mountain with. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera. I hope not. But that's happening. I baked a loaf of banana bread that you could use in the construction of a house. So my youngest daughter Jessica came over and she baked a loaf of banana bread that turned out perfect. We sat outside and had watermelon and <laughs> waited for the banana bread to bake and then I told her about the issue that I had. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, with this pattern right here. Remember last week, I think at some point I put up a video and I was talking about how I needed to find out what the cutting layout key was. And I was looking at number 10 and number 11 right here. And I thought this was blank, the information that needed to be there. <laughs> Oh, no, no. There it is, right there. And yes, I did email the Simplicity Company because Simplicity is the parent company of New Look. And I got a lovely email back. They sent me all, a whole new set of instructions. I think they misunderstood my question, but that's fine because honestly, they did email me back within the hour. I mean, I sent the email, boom, within an hour, I had an email with a an attached document that included this. And I am gonna say that when I opened it up, this was like, this is what was popping up first, as it was, you know, how they do. They, you download on your phone, maybe you don't have that problem. We have a very slow internet. But anyway, I did see it. But the, I think the reason that I discovered this was Jessica was standing in my sewing room, and normally I'm in here by myself, but I was facing that way, and I had picked this up, and when I did, this caught my eye, and I was like, wait a minute, what is number 10 and number 11? What does that mean? And then I realized that they're numbered. One, two, three, all of the steps are numbered here, and these are the examples, which I think is brilliant. I've not seen that before. So this is a new look. And if you've wondered how to read the how to use your multi-size pattern here, this is a diagram that explains all of these right here. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to bring you guys in closer to this. I just have to lower the boom. I love saying that. And there's my line. That keeps me in frame. So here's what I need to do. I I need to wash this fabric. And then I will get ready. I've already cut out all the pattern pieces right here and they are wrinkled to the degree that in my book requires a little bit of a press with a warm iron the larger pieces in particular have some of those well-known pattern wrinkles that can truly cause a resize issue they just they're, it's crazy how that happens and I'm sure it has something to do with the way they're folded and pressed for being put into the, the envelope. But as you can see right here, there's a lot of wrinkling. So these all have to be pressed with a warm iron and ready to be cut out. And this has to be washed and dried. So the thing is, now that I know what my key is, number 10 up here is for uh, fa the pattern would be placed on the fabric printed side down 
and 11 is printed side up. We're doing view A right here. It still concerned me because I wanted to make sure I understood exactly where my pieces were supposed to go. Um, I have 45 inch wide fabric. I will be cutting my pieces out on a double thickness, which means they, that my fabric will be cut in half and then placed back on top of itself. So I'm going to wash it and I'm going to dry it and then when I come back we're going to pin these at that point ironed pattern pieces to it and we'll begin cutting out this beautiful blue fabric for this adorable jumper. So I thought I'd mention this is going to my sister. I did finally finish it. It turned out really cute. It's an iron-on uh, embroidery design and then this is just a white pillowcase that I bought on Amazon and off it goes. Okay, there she is, all cut out. It did take a little bit longer than I had anticipated it would take uh, part of the time. I was trying to figure out how to get Little Beast to record, and I hope I did. Uh, I was trying to kind of give you a overview of how I cut this out. So today has been a challenge. Most Mondays are, today is Monday the 23rd of August 2021. Um, I was worried when I woke up this morning, just a side note, uh, I went outside to the gardens and it was 52 degrees uh, and I worried I may still have to bring my tomatoes in the house. It, I, there's, there's very little hope for tomatoes when the temperatures are that low. We'll see what happens. But um, they're just starting to blush up a little bit, and I'd hate to lose them. I really would. But, you know, things like that, they happen. Gardens are sometimes just hit or miss. You just do the best you can. Okay, so to kind of explain what I did, the two pieces that make up the front, right here, I think, this is the front. And the two pieces that make up the back had to be cut with the fabric in the same direction. Hey guys, next day, I don't know if you know what happened. I mean, I'm hoping that I will be able to blend the two videos that I have. One is from Little Beast, and of course the other one is from Big Beast. So what happened is, after I cut this original fabric here, I did not put it 
I did not match it up correctly. Like this piece right here, I'm going to have to flip this over. So I, I had to go back and purchase more. Just like anything, if you cut out two pattern pieces and they're both face up like this right here, then you're going to have two of the exact same. You're going to have two with the arm side here and the neck here. What I needed was something that I could open out and one would have the neck edge over here and the neck edge here and the arm side here and the arm side here and I did not have that. So that has to be correctly placed. The great news is I went ahead and bought myself an extra half yard of fabric. So if I did have any adjustments to make, I would have plenty of fabric. I don't mind because I love this fabric. It will work beautifully for so many other projects. It won't make any difference if it is a tote bag, an actual bag that you could you know, carry as a purse, um, clothing item. It doesn't matter um, what you use it for because, I mean, just look at it. It's, it's beautiful. And the ties, I think the ties are fine. It might be, I think I actually lined these up correctly. I did. See how this is wrong side facing wrong side? That means that whatever is on this side, the right side of this, will be on the right side of this. It's a weird concept. And I also wanted to show you, just because, my daughter Jessica took me, she drove me, and this, we found these, and she was like, oh, yeah. So look at these darling buttons, aren't they cute? They're the uh, Jesse James Dress It Up. I think it's Jesse James, yeah. Let's see if I can get that to focus, maybe. Ooh, sometimes if you take a sharp, pointy thing. There we go. Anyway, they're so cute. So let's look at them real quick. And I will be probably putting these on either tote bags or other really cute things. And let me zoom in so you can really get a good look at them. Oh, they're so cute. Don't we just love that? So these are thimbles, and of course they're plastic, but they're so cute. Look at this sewing needle. How adorable is this? <laughs> oh, a mannequin. And then we found this for my oldest daughter and Jessica's older sister, Candace. We're going to go see her next Monday. Today is Tuesday, August the 24th, and we're leaving on the 30th of August of 2021 to go visit Candace down in Oregon, and she teaches voice lessons. Look at this. She also plays the piano. I mean, my goodness. Love it. I think I saved maybe two, two and a half yards of fabric. Let me get my markings. I'm looking at this. I'm going to read ahead. I should do that anyway. It's something that I always do and for some reason the last couple times during this jumper challenge I haven't been doing it and it's kind of messing me up okay so we have some circles on the back they're for the ties okay these are the two circles that are for the placement for the tie so our tie end has two marks on the end of it these would be folded in half so we have a large dot and then we have two small dots 
the two small dots are supposed to meet like so. And then we are supposed to place our tie so that this large dot right here matches this large dot right here. I'll write 10 there. And the small dots go there. So we're going to have the large dot matching up with this large dot and the small dot matching up with this small dot and then once we stitch them together this will flip to the outside and everything will be good so large and small are for the tie makes sense to me now all right I'll just use my black friction ink because on the back of printed fabric you can mark and I'm just going to do this okay and then I'm going to take a pin and push one pin through the center of the mark I just made and another pin through the center of the mark I just made. So I have two marks, the big and the little. Turn this over and then mark where those pins are emerging on the other side of my fabric. For the view A front, we're gonna see what kind of markings this one has. And more than likely that if there would be anything, it would be a dart because we have this weird shape right here. So let's look at this. Okay, and these will be the dart lines right there. I'm going to use my ruler. You can use any ruler you have and either chalk or friction ink and I'm using 10. Yesterday I used a blue um, friction ink pen to make a mark there but it's a little hard to see so there we go I think I actually need to have it with this. This has a lip. I don't know if you can see that. This needs to be closest to the fabric, not up. So I'm going to flip it over and use it this way. Here we go. Much better. Okay. And then just from that little dot right there, slide the ruler down to the size. In my case, it's a 10 right along that line and then finish drawing the dart. I will have to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Did I? Okay, so I got it marked as I may or may not have recorded. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I am going to fold up my pattern piece because. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, no, I'm not. I never said that. So the next thing I need to mark on this pattern is where my little front neck stitching takes us with that cute little, I don't know what you call it, just a little v-neck right there. So I'm going to pin where size 10 is. And we're 
going to mark right here. We need to put a circle. And I believe this circle will match up with the circle on the front of the front facing. All right, the pen has exited cleanly through to the other side, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to flip it over and just kind of mark a circle. And I want to be able to see that. Okay. There is another sure what the small dot is for. I think we're supposed to just mark meet up, large dot, small dot. Yeah. Okay, so this is the small dot and I'm willing to bet that there is a large dot, small dot. Ouch. Gosh, situation on the oh, front facing. Okay, so that'll help me know that that is that. Okay. All right, I am very happy with all of that. Before we continue, I've got to cut some fabric to make a uh, bit of bias binding for the sleeves. This is a sleeveless dress and they are trimmed with bias trim. Bias trim is important in this application because being cut at a 45 degree angle, the fabric has that lovely stretch. And I'll just kind of demo that real quick. I'm going to cut a fat quarter because that's what most uh, people use. Most fat quarters are 18 by 20, but when you're actually cutting it from your fabric, this of course would be about 22. So I need 18 inches this direction, which is my ruler. Okay, I'm just gonna make a little there. Right. We'll flip it over. Cut it this direction. I don't have a left hand rotary cutter, so I have to have it over here on the right hand side. Okay, and I probably should have just gone ahead and done this first, but this will show you how to do it. So you basically need 18 inches cut on the fold. And I have to fold it in half or just here. We'll just tear it. Alright, there we go. And then cut this in half on the fold. And one of these is a fat quarter. Now some companies will sell a fat quarter at like I said, 18 by 20 inches, but a true fat quarter is this right here. Okay, so now to get our bias, and on a piece of fabric about like this, we could get up to about four yards. So I'm going, this is how bias trim looks. We have a 90 degree angle over here. We have 90 degrees all the way around. If I try to stretch this fabric on the 90 degree, there is nothing, but this is 45 degrees. 
And when I try to stretch it, oh, look at that. Nice, good amount of stretch on there, or of course, this direction. So what I'm going to do is take this corner or this corner, any of the corners, and I'm gonna fold it up to make this little bit of a triangle here. And it should be really, like I don't want this overlapping. It has to be kind of bang on right there. All right, and we have a little bit of extra fabric. Now you can, from your yardage, if you have some at home, you can just cut 18 by 18 if you want. That works just as well. I chose to do it this way so that you could see what it would look like if you were cutting from your fat quarter. I'm probably going to have to trim it right here. Now you have this little strip of fabric that is probably about four and a half. Okay. All right. So there we go. Extra fabric. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut with my scissors right along this fold like so. I'm going to use my duck bill scissors. They're offset. They're easier to hold my hand like this instead of like this. Now, of course, if you have a clearly discernible pattern on your fabric, doing this will completely change the way it looks. If it is meant to be straight up and down, it will be sideways when you get your bias made, just as a, I'll just put that out there. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is bring this up to here. And I'm keeping an eye on this right here. This is my cut edge. I'm going to put it on the edge of my cutting table right here. I'm going to take my Omni Grid. It's three inches wide, but I only want two inches of bias trim. So I'm going to look at my table measurements and use the edge of my Omni grid to get two inch wide cuts. Okay, there's one. And you don't have to remove them as you go. I just find it easier for myself to do it that way. You can just leave them where they are. Okay. Just make sure you're going two inches. And two inches. Now, I don't know that I'm going to go... I might do one more. Personally, I don't need four and a half yards. I don't know that I'm gonna use these little, oops, little tiny bits. Probably not. Yeah, I think I'll just put these in my, they'll be good for something and I'll put them in my cabbage patch over there. Okay. So now what do you do with it? Well, now let's start with the longest that we have. We have these lovely 
strips of bias. You can see we have some nice stretch. How do we put these together? All right, we're going to put them together, right sides together. And we don't want this situation right here where these two angles are the same. It seems like that's what you would want. If I come along here and I stitch these together, I will end up with, let me pin it so you can see, right along there. And then I'm going to open this up and I have this situation here. That's not what I want. What I need from my bias trim is a straight line because I'm going to be pulling this through a bias maker. So I want the other side right here, opposite, just like this. So the way that this needs to work is we want the opposite point on each side. So see this and this are different. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to lay it across this one so that I have about this much, about a quarter of an inch of each of these two tips poking out right there. Now I'll take this pin and I'll pin this and when I open it out this is what I end up with and I will trim off these little dog ears and I am going to sew this at about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to get these set up, trim them, cut them, get them ready. And then we're going to make the bias trim. Okay. And of course, I wouldn't pin them that way. If I were making this trim, I would pin them horizontally. So. Now I find it helpful for myself to just line it up and stitch. I'm using the edge of my sewing machine foot as my stitch guide. I do have my machine set up on needle down at 2.5 stitch length. And I am going to lock these stitches. I don't want them to come undone. Okay, right along that edge. Okay, and I don't have to take this out. I can just take two more. So I, and the way that I keep this straight in my head is I have this one facing me face up. And then I take the second one right here, make sure that my edges are oppositional, which they are. They're not the same. This would be what it looked like if they were the same, but they're not. They're this. And then I just flip the one that I have on top here this way. If it works for you to do that the other direction, then I would say do it the other direction. It's just for me, this is the easiest way. All right, and stitch. We also did a clothesline stitch in which we don't cut and remove our fabric from the sewing machine. So I have three pieces that are sewn together and all I have to do now is trim at the thread that's holding them together. One there. And one there. Okay, 
and I've got these little ears they call these little dog ears so when I open this up I can finger press my bias trim and I can just snip off right there okay we're going to do the other two You'll see the one on the bottom edge is disappearing under the fabric, and that's as it should be. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do, I think I have it in my hazel bag. And this is a fun tool. If you don't have one, you don't absolutely have to have one in order to make a bias trim. But if you do have one, if someone's given one to you, and you don't exactly know what in the heck to do with it, I'm about to show you. We should probably, okay, move that out of the way. So this is called a bias tape maker right here. That's what it looks like. So we cut our trim to two inches wide. I'm going to use one that's actually set better. All right. So here's the here's the math. When I put this through the bias tape maker, and if you now we'll have we have our fabric cut at a point, right? So this will just poke in there. But sometimes trying to get this to go all the way through can be, infuri can be infuriating. Just trying to get your fabric to come out this end. But there is a slot right here on the top. And I have found, now some people will use their uh, seam ripper, but I use a pen. And I just push this through. I'm going to see if I can get that to show you. Hold it, and we're just going to push, and look what's happening. It's poking through. So now I can just pull this, and it's going to automatically and beautifully fold into your trim, like so. And then we can press it. I usually go ahead and press it at this stage right here and then once that's happened this will be single fold bias tape. I'm not sure that I want to use single fold even though that is what the pattern calls for. So once I get this pressed I'll show you the difference between single fold and double fold. Basically, it's very simple. This is single fold right here. This is double fold. And if you recall, to stay stitch is to stitch along the neck edge. And I'm going from the shoulder to the front of the dress on all four pieces.
All right, the next step here is to make the darts on the front two pieces. And those are the darts that we marked yesterday. So those lines right there are our dart. And we're just going to fold this line to meet this line up to this little point that you might not be able to see right where my thumbnail is, right there. Okay, we want to make sure that they are lined up like so. And then stitch. So I'm going to take bobbin thread and needle thread, separate them all the way down, make sure my thread isn't twisted and I've got it where it's flat against the fabric, like so. Now I'm going to make a half knot and another half knot and pull that all the way down, snug to the fabric but I don't want to pull it too tight or again it will pucker and I'm going to make another half knot half knot and do the same thing and then cut now it is a secured stitch but it's not going to be puckery or weird looking and I'm going to do the same thing on this end this end will be caught in the side seam alright so this is the dart right here and I'll be pressing you want to press this folded edge down toward the hem of the dress and there we go so there's that one I have to do the other side and when I come back we're going to stitch the side the front middle seam in the front of this dress all right so now we are going to Take the two front pieces, they'll be the ones that have the darts in the front. This is a back. This must be it right here. Okay. Alright, so we have a notch on each of the front pieces. And we'll match the notch up. Right sides together, like so. There you go, there's that notch. And we're just going to match those up. All right. And I honestly think for me, the next step would be to stitch. There is a point at which we stop, and that is where we have that first um bring the rope with right sides together stitch the front sections at the center front seam stitching from the lower edge to the large dot and that large dot is right here which is one two three four inches away from the neck edge of this particular size and version. Back stitch at the large dot to reinforce the seam. However, I think what I'm going to do is on each piece, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch along the edge of the front from that large dot down. So starting Right here, I'm going to zigzag just to kind of help finish off the raw edge. This is going to be right down the center of the dress, and I just don't want a whole lot of fraying ends.
Okay, now right sides together. I need to put my machine back in a straight stitch and put these two pieces right sides together and match that notch right there. And we are supposed to start stitching from the lower edge up to this dot. Now I am not likely going to see that dot so I'm going to put something there to help me remember that I'm supposed to stop stitching right here. And the thing I'm going to put is a pin because I don't see my Oh, there they are. Okay, what I would prefer to use is something like this. It's big, it's clunky, and I'm not going to just accidentally stitch right over it. So there's that to help me remember. I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And our stitch, our seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch. Now the next step is to do the pocket placement. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create this pocket in exactly the same fashion that I created that pocket. So, what we do is, okay, and then we also have to measure the lower edge, which I'm just going to put a pin and then mark with my friction ink pen. I'm looking at the little dots on the back of the pattern and just setting in pins. I need to make sure I got the other side right. And that's how far down we're going to stitch when we make the pleat, the folded pleat, which is primarily what this is called, is a folded pleat. Okay? So the way this works is friction ink pin friction ink pen. Where are you? There you are. Okay. So because I have a straight pen in the back of the pocket, you can see it right there. All I have to do is just draw a line and there and draw a line like so. And now I can pop out these two straight pins. All right, all good to go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these done. Um, you know, finish up this one just like I did the other one, and uh, then we are going to. Um, Mark the placement on the front of the dress. I'll do that in the other room. And then we'll get these applied. Okay, so I have decided I'm going to redo the top of the pocket. I've just, I just didn't like it. 
I'm going to do a blanket stitch across the top. I have folded both of these to the center like so. I'm going to close off the top and then I'm just going to fold it down one time. I feel like it has better structure that way. Um, if I could, I would add a like a lining layer to these pockets. Unfortunately, I think it might make them crunchy and I don't think they'd be appropriate on this dress. It might be if you were making it from say a wool fabric or um, something with a, a little bit more heft. But this fabric is just too lightweight for a lining. It just doesn't feel like that would be a good idea. So to accomplish this blanket stitch, I'm using number 13 on the Bernina 1080 Special and I'm not going to change my stitch length or width. I'm just going to let the machine decide, which it already has, and I'm going to close this off. Just like that and we are supposed to stitch all the way around of course leaving the, the top open and I think it was stitch once or stitch twice just stitch once on the outside pin the pocket to the front along the pocket line and then stitch close to the side and the lower edges so side, side, lower edge. Okay, I'm going to do that real quick. These are put together and then also while I was at the ironing board, I pressed this center seam open. I need to trim this thread right here. Okay, so the, the front neck edge, uh, and here I've got it pressed as well up at the top. The front neck edge has been stay stitched. The front center seam has been stitched and the pockets have been applied. So if I look at the instructions, I believe the next step is to deal with facing, unless I'm supposed to. Okay, so this is the back. So with right sides together, stitch the back sections at the center back, and then stitch the front to the back at the shoulder seams. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that done. The dress is attached at the shoulder seam on the right and the left. Right there. Looks pretty good. All right. I believe the next step is to work on the facing. So let me shake this out. OK, 
Okay, so so step eight is the stitching the front to the back at the shoulder seams. Now we're on step number nine, which tells us that we need to apply the interfacing to the wrong side of our front facing number five and our back facing number six. And then with right sides together, we're gonna stitch these two together. I do have to remark the the big circle and the little circle, so I'll be doing that after I get this interfacing press. Interfacing has been applied, and I'm going to stitch from here to here. Now we need to attach shoulder seam to shoulder seam. Pretty good. So these are now stitched together at the shoulders and this little piece right here at the bottom lower edge of the front facing has been stitched. So this is what we have right here. Next step is to finish all the way around the bottom edge however we want to do that. Okay. So this is what it looks like on the right side of the fabric. This is what it looks like on the wrong side of the fabric. So the next step after we get all that done is with right sides together pin the facing to the neck edge matching the centered shoulder seams the small and large dots. Okay. front of the dress is open is right where that dot is. Okay, make sure everything is as it should be. Straight stitch, I'm going to go 2.5 and here we go. this 
this to the inside. Yep, looks like we caught it. Okay, now we need to trim. It shows this clipped and trimmed. So we'll do that. I'm going to clip this corner right here. And when I come back, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about with this front. Um, I think that's a little hard to see on camera. So let me take care of that, and I'll be right back. All right, so we have this neck edge all finished. There's the back. There's the shoulder. There's the other shoulder. And here is the front right here. Very cute. You stitch in the ditch along the shoulder seam here and the shoulder seam over here. And then I believe we are supposed to, yeah, stitching in the ditch or using a small piece of fusible web. Okay, I'm going to stitch in the ditch along the top of the shoulder seam. There we go. All right, so we're not going to stitch the side seams together until we have the ties made. Gosh, this is so cute. Here's the tie. And what we are supposed to do is fold these in half. right sides together we are going to stitch three eighths of an inch found on that first one if I just twisted this it came right off and then all I have to do is just pull okay so I want to press it it says press it does not say how to press it in other words do you press it with the seam in the center or do you press it with the seam on the side? I'm guessing based on the way that looks that they want this pressed with the point the way it's shown on the pattern drawing which is like this not smooshed like that. So I'll press both of these and be right back. Alright so our ties have been pressed and our next step is to attach them at the back, on the back, I believe. Yeah. Let's look for those marks that we made right there. And they will go, this one goes here raw edges even and I will just go ahead and stitch it.
next step is to make sure that these ties stay out of the way. I think I will just go ahead and loop them like so. And we're going to flip the back so that it's right sides together with the front. Alrighty. on this view is the sleeves or they're not sleeves they're armhole openings or arm sigh and they have to be treated with the bias that we made but I want to see oh how cute okay so now here we have our single fold bias tape that we made this morning and what we are supposed to do, open up our sleeve like this, and then take our bias, I'm gonna cut these straight across, instead of having that little pokey point there. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna fold this in, and on the underarm, portion of the arm side we're gonna with right sides together and raw edges even so all the way around all the way okie dokie I am back so I'm gonna start down here underneath the arm on the side seam and I will stitch see I'm going to find the side seam which should be right here okay all right Drop my needle. It's like a third, it's like having a third hand. And I'm going to cut this off right there. And I'm going to fold it up. Pull this pin. Drop the presser foot. And stitch. stitch these sleeve facings down okay and I also wanted to point out that I tacked the center of the back neck facing to the back center seam and I'm just tying those threads off I just kind of tacked it down with a couple of little stitches just to kind of keep it from you know lifting right here 
which now it can't do because I've tacked it down. Okay, it has turned out just adorable. The sleeves have been, sleeve openings have been pressed, and I'm going to go try to stage this for you guys to see kind of the full effect. I mean, we have our cute little neck opening here, right there. We have the sleeves. Then there's these adorable pockets that are so easy to make that you could do pockets like this for so many different things. Um, they're they're just adorable. I love the the um, the little pleated effect on the front. And then of course we have the side ties that I feel like are appropriate to the dress. They're not too long. They're not ridiculously wide. Go ahead and just kind of loosely loop this, you know, bow knot kind of, yeah, something like that. I think that would be appropriate. All right, I'm going to go get it set up and I'll take some photos and then get this video edited and we'll get it all ready and set up for you guys to see. If you liked this video, process for this jumper please give this a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed please join us we'd love to have you thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye